We're going to start things off with Amy Quick, and she is a film producer uh, with Arvold Studios. And Erica Arvold was going to be here. She came down with laryngitis, a horrible curse in the business that she's in, right, to have. You talk about not really um, being able to talk to people could be very problematic in the casting business. But we have agreed that Erica is going to do a separate session, either in the law office or the Hill House, and talk to you about the work that she does in casting. And Amy's going to make a few references to that as well. Um, but Amy's going to talk about production, the film industry. Um, she's going to talk to you about being a crew member, being an extra. And she's going to share with you some information about different projects that she's been involved in. And then following Amy's presentation, we're going to hear from Catherine Davis from the Paramount Theater. And she's going to talk about the history of the Paramount, programs, events, its role in the community, and ways for you to be involved in the theater. So without any further introduction from me, I'm going to turn the program over to Amy, who's going to start things. But I wanted to be sure that you knew that we've now posted the videos on the Brown College website. Um, and we hope that you will share them with people. All right? You can give anyone. It's the University of Virginia. Just type in Brown College. You go to courses backstage, and our videos are there. And Finley's been doing an outstanding job, um, and we really do appreciate the effort that you've been putting into this. So if you want to refresh your memory about any of these presentations, please go to our website. OK, thank you. And Amy, we're going to turn this over to you. All right, let's see. OK. OK, so my name is Amy Quick. I work um, here in Charlottesville uh, as a coordinating producer at Arvold. Um, we've recently rebranded. We do casting. Um, we do production and we do education. So the education we do is in for the form of workshops for crew and workshops for actors. They're more of a hands-on continuing education because filmmaking is really a craft. And I hope that you guys come through this presentation understanding that it's a craft. It's something that you learn and you evolve. Um, I got involved with it myself as an extra like four years ago or something. I've had an odd path. I worked at a fantasy football website. I was a technical writer. I sort of went through a lot of stuff that I didn't really feel at home in. Um, so somehow I was doing research for a nonprofit. I got onto a film by uh, Boyd Tinsley of the Dave Matthews Band. Somehow I was an extra for two days. And I discovered that I liked it behind the camera <laughs> instead. So I became a PA. I met some people. I started working as craft service. I've been wardrobe. I've been a production coordinator. So I've pretty much seen most sides of the business. Um, we'll get back to that a little bit later, but if you are interested, there are ways to get into it where you don't have to have a film degree, and hopefully you can get in on some entry stuff if you're interested, and you can see if you like it and if you'd like to go on. Anyway, um, our mission statement is to raise the bar of filmmaking through collaboration, creativity, and expertise. Um, Erica will come in and talk with us a little bit, but I've been lucky to work under her because she is the most amazing collaborative mind that I have ever worked with. Stephen has worked with her on a couple of projects. We've sucked, sucked him in. We'll come back to that later. But um, it truly is a collaborative business where if you are a creative person and you like working with amazing people, that's really where you want to be. So we're going to start a little bit with casting. My wheelhouse is production, but we'll start with casting because that's where Erica started. She moved up from L.A. Um, and discovered that there are movies here and they actually um, happen and they need actors. So Ilya Kazan said that 90% of directing is casting because that's the talent. Um, it's a craft. It, you know, you're sort of born with a little bit of an eye for it, but you really sort of hone it. Um, and it is an actively professional um, type of thing to do. We have a huge database of actors, but the goal is to find that perfect person. And it's almost like a needle in a haystack sometimes. We go through a lot with the directors on a lot of different types of projects. But the goal is we really want to raise the bar of acting and to grow the industry here in Virginia so that more production comes because they know they can find good actors. Um, so casting is also an important part of not just that creative part, but the business end on a lot of independent films. I don't know if you guys have read anything about it, but if you get a big name star, that's where you get your money these days. The distribution landscape is changing, and studio films are not made that much anymore. So if you can bring in, so we did House Hunting. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But we brought in, um, I don't know if you guys have seen The, the Beastmaster. But um, we brought in Mark Singer, and he was a big name, and that was sort of one of the first steps that we had towards 
getting investors and telling people that this is a quality project because look, there's a quality name actor involved in this. Um, with that, so uh, it's both creative and the business success of a project. And when you're pitching a film, you can say someone's attached. You know that. There, so it is a very sort of pragmatic and creative art. Um, there's three kinds of roles. Um, there are stars, there are speaking roles and day players, and there are background and extras. We just wrapped up, for example, Killing Kennedy, and that was with Rob Lowe and Jennifer Goodwin, and we were employed to do the Virginia casting. And so the top four roles were done by an LA casting person, but we cast, I think it was between 50 and 90 speaking roles. These are our casting assistants, Lene and Christian. Um, but in the, in, the, in the space of a few weeks, we had to find 50 to 90 people and audition them all and get their tapes to the director and do all that. It's very exciting. It's very intense. We also had about 250 extras. And that's another way you can get involved with film because we're always looking for extras um, to be in these anywhere from the Killing Kennedys down to small commercials that we cast. Um, and that's the second thing, the type, size, and scope of the project. We also did Lincoln. But Lincoln, we did all the locals casting on. And so you'll see, like Richard Warner, who works here, was in the film. You'll see a lot of people that you might run into around the streets of Charlottesville. Um, so depending on the type, size, and scope of the project is sort of what we take on. We do location casting, and we do principles. Um, basically, what happens is actors, um, we either do them by appointment, again, depending on the project, or they put themselves on tape, they send it in, we call them back, they come into the office, they check in with these lovely ladies. There can be between three and five different rounds of auditions. And finally, with something big, you bring them the last final ones into the director and we hire them. And we also do the deals and then we turn it over to production. So this is where production comes in. You may think that it's just on set, but it is not. Films take between three and five years to make. Sometimes with like World War Z, it took 10 because the development of a project is the creative part. So you'll start with development, you have to have a script. It has to be amazing. Most people rewrite for years. Um, so you work with the writers, you prepare the script, you get your actor tied in, um, you get your financing then. Um, you put together a prospectus if you're an indie filmmaker, which is generally what we do. Then there's pre-production, which is all your planning. It's logistics, it's, it's doing your production design, it's planning your travel, it's planning the shoot, it's doing scene by scene down to what types of matches do you want on a Civil War period piece. It is all of that. It's the more pre-production that you do, the better your production will be. And sometimes that's where we need a lot of people. So we need office help then. We need people that have a good mind for logistics and details and can talk to people on the phone and can line things up and can do research, you know? How much does a flat boat cost in the Chesapeake so that we can put a camera on it and drive around? Um, it's that type of, you know, that type of thing. Uh, these two have been, <laughs> probably tell you later about some of the interesting we things we've done. Um, I've sourced a lot of stuff. Anyway. Um, <laughs> And then you set up their production office, their schedule, there's coordination, there's running equipment, um, there's all that stuff. So then production is generally the shortest time of all this. It's the most glamorous one. It's probably the most fun because you're on set for 12 to 14 to 16 hours a day and you're with people and you're getting shots and the stars are there and it's, it's very, very high paced. It's excellent if you have everything planned out down to the T during pre-production. Your production will be the best ride of your life and that's usually where most people fall down the rabbit hole. That is where I and Erica did. Um, <laughs> But that generally lasts, so for house hunting, which we'll talk about later, we had a 28-day window where we had to shoot that many hours of film. Then it moves into post-production, so we have our eye on it through all this. Um, you have to do editing, sound, visual effects, green screen, any voiceover, that type of thing. And then it goes into distribution. So these days, the distribution market has changed. The studios um, do really big budgets, but for small things like this, there's different outlets. Um, so you have to find the outlet that's right for you, whether you want to go with a media buyer, whether you want to try and sell it on Amazon, whether you, you, know, you want to try and do um, local theaters, the film, film circuit, film festival circuit, they're all different. Um, so those are all choices that you can make and we're all learning with that. Um, so a couple things that we have done have been um, house hunting, we've done uh, time machine guitar, well we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so we produce feature films, we've done short films, TV pilots, commercials, we've done web-based media, so we did a comedy, you know, something like a 20-minute comedy 
um, webisode. Um, when we've done industrials, which are training videos, a lot of that stuff around here in Virginia, we'll talk about that in a minute, is required. So around here, it's hard to find a wall-to-wall -wall feature film work. And so what we do is we sort of pad it out, and we do these things, and we love doing them because they're just a different way to be creative. Um, and then there's the crew base in Virginia. So that's the other thing we try and do is grow the crew base in Virginia to bring business in. So let's talk about Virginia a little bit. Um, the production landscape here is that we generally can support films between three and seven million dollars. Um, I encourage you to go to the film office website and take a look at the types of projects that go on. There's more that goes on than you think. Um, the Virginia usually offers to big movies the type of locations that they want. So if you think about the War of the Worlds that came here, if you think about Argo, if you think about those kind of movies, we have certain locations that they want. We don't have very good production incentives, which are government money that they put aside um, for films, but we do have excellent locations. If we can grow the crew, we can continue to bring movies in. But you have people like Steven Spielberg loves Virginia. He did War of the Worlds, and so he came back for Lincoln. The film office courted him for seven years for him to come back to do Lincoln, and he did. Um, Erica cast the extras on that, but it was a huge production. Evan Almighty, as you know, was filmed in Crozet. Captain Phillips just wrapped, which will be coming out next week. That did some shooting in Norfolk. I know a lot of people that worked on that. It was very exciting. Um, Dirty Dancing, back in the day, filmed down at Smith Mountain Lake. Um, Erica was actually an extra in that. Shh. <laughs> Ask her about it when she comes back. Um, and then there was Argo. Uh, so for television, um, we worked on Killing Lincoln, on Killing Kennedy, which should premiere this week, on Turn, um, which is an AMC pilot that's been picked up for the fall. Um, and on John Adams, we know a lot of the people here that we've worked with worked on John Adams. They came here for Williamsburg, actually, and that's another case of that, and Argo. Um, tell Etsy, it's, no, I'm reading them along line. And The Abolitionist, so there's different PBS things. Right now, Lene is casting something in West Virginia for the History Channel, and Christian is working on an independent movie, which is sort of the next thing down at the bottom. I'm going to skip one, but We Did House Hunting, the parking lot movie is a documentary that shot here. If you guys know the corner parking lot, I encourage you to look that up. It's fantastic. Um, there, Wish You Well, uh, the David Baldacci one. Erica was an associate producer on that. We worked on that, and Big Stone Gap which I think is needing extras, and so um, Christian is casting Big Stone Gap right now. Yeah. All of you. Yeah. <laughs> and Christian went to UVA, and she's got some you know, very short, brief comments that she'll make about being a student here at UVA, but she's leaving right after this to go down Big Stone Gap because we're actually going down the cast, right? Not, not today. I wouldn't do it. Right. 